Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Dolores Tarver. I'm a licensed psychologist here in Georgia, and it is time for the TT Time with Dr. Tarver is a wellness-based podcast. It is not intended to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health provider. Welcome to October. This is the first Tuesday in October. October is Breast Cancer Awareness and Domestic Violence Awareness and Prevention Month. And episodes this month are going to be viewer's choice. And they are coming from survivors who have offered some suggestions for podcast topics. So this week, we are discussing being able to receive compliments. And I know you all are thinking, well, where where does that come from? How does that fit in? Well, I will tell you that if you have um, at at any point interacted with someone, or this may be true for you, where uh, somebody's giving you a compliment and you've said uh, the yes buts. So, for example, they may say, oh, you did such a wonderful job singing the other day. And you may say, oh, my voice was cracking. I was pitchy. It wasn't really my best work. Or someone may say to you, hey, I think you would be a really good fit for this. And you say, well, why would you think that? Right. So we downplay or we may be dismissive of or even question why someone would give us a compliment. And so that is an important topic. And I'll get into why as we move along. So what makes people uncomfortable receiving compliments or even sometimes you'll see people have a stronger reaction, such as general dislike toward receiving compliments. Some people may say, I don't want you to give me a compliment. Uh, I was uh, tickled. I saw Ice Cube uh, made a post that he didn't want people to refer to him as the GOAT, um, the greatest of all time. And so people in the comments were like, Ice Cube just got to be crotchety uh, and, and complain and criticize about something. But others were saying, well, how about we respect his choice? Maybe he just doesn't like to receive compliments or maybe it is that particular compliment that he may feel like is not fitting to him. Maybe he doesn't feel like he's the greatest of all time. And then some people even went into maybe he just doesn't like the image of goats and what goats can sometimes represent symbolically. So let's dive into why people have difficulty accepting compliments because there's a lot of different reasons. One that you'll hear quite frequently is for coming from this place of self-esteem. So we recognize that to accept a compliment means that we have to have some sense of self-worth, some belief in that what a person is saying can be true for us. So when we don't accept a compliment or we have a hard time accepting a compliment, it may be because it's not consistent with how we perceive ourselves. And that can be from a positive or a negative standpoint. I will focus more on the negative self-worth piece. So when we have negative self-worth, we sometimes feel like a compliment is not really authentic. It can be confusing to us, like it just doesn't make sense why someone would say that. We feel like it's inaccurate, or I may even feel like that's a jab. So you're really not giving me a compliment. You'll hear people say it was a backhanded compliment. And that can have a lot to do with the relationship we have with the person who's giving the compliment. But also it can be related to how we see ourselves and that we perceive that there may be an expectation that this compliment puts on us that we don't feel like we could meet. So perhaps it may be you're saying, hey, you did a great job singing. So now in my mind, I've got to show up with perfection every time I perform. Or, oh, you did a great job with that presentation. That means now you're gonna be expecting me to do other presentations or take on more responsibilities or roles. And I don't know that I can live up to that expectation. So I don't wanna accept this compliment because I really don't wanna accept what I feel like comes with the compliment. We do think that that when we downplay those compliments, then people won't have those expectations of us, whether or not that's accurate, that may be a perception that we have. Sometimes we don't like compliments because it can feel like it's manipulation. And this can be particularly true if we're feeling very insecure. So you're giving me a compliment because you're wanting something or you're trying to get me to feel a certain way about you, perceive you in a different uh, light, perhaps. And so in other words, there's an ulterior motive. This isn't a true compliment. It's coming because you want something in return for it. You're trying to uh, get me to respond in a particular way. And so you're giving me this compliment and it's not really genuine. And in particular, particular, when we have imposter syndrome, I know you all have heard that term before, 
So I don't actually know why I'm here, why people are looking at me in this way, why I'm in this um, this category with these other people. I don't have the same abilities that they do. But so what ends up happening with imposter syndrome is that we can place a high value in our low opinions of ourselves. And we, uh, uh, we place a low regard for the opinions and observations of others. So in other words, like I'm right, you're wrong. Like I'm not good at this. I don't have these abilities. I don't have these talents. I shouldn't be here. Um, and your perception of me, like that's just inaccurate. You're just wrong. Now you could be right about other people, but you're wrong about me. And sometimes that is because we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust in our competence, our ability to be able to do things, our ability to be able to be successful and maintain that success. We talk a lot about in weight loss that losing the weight isn't the hardest battle. It's maintaining the weight loss that is the, that's the hardest battle. And I think that is it for us with regard to our self-worth, too, is that how can I maintain this level so that people are continuing to see me in this light? And so sometimes we don't feel like we can. We don't trust our ability to be able to sustain it. We don't trust our judgment. Um, and so when we don't trust ourselves, it can also be very difficult for us to trust other people. So you're giving me this compliment, but if I don't trust me and my abilities and my worth and my value, then am I going to really trust you to be able to com comment on it? And I think sometimes we don't want to disappoint other people. Um, and, and because we don't want to disappoint other people, we're living in that space of, well, I can't disappoint you if I don't try. Um, if I don't accept this, if I reject this, if this doesn't become my truth, it, then it can't be your truth either. Right. Because, again, that lends itself to how I feel about me, how I see me. And what happens when I deny a compliment, it confirms for me what I already believe about myself. It can confirm for me that people are conditional. Their love is conditional. And so you're only going to give me compliments when it benefits you. You're only going to give me compliments um, because you want me to stay in a relationship with you or you want me to stay in this job. You want me to um, help you with something. Uh, but really, the true thing is that this negative belief that I have about myself, that's the accurate piece. So sometimes the, you know, self-worth is one thing, the negative self-esteem, uh, but sometimes it's because we've had negative experiences. So I'll comment a little bit more about some of the things I talked about in self-worth because that's where our self-worth comes from oftentimes is particularly our early experiences in life. So we know that people who have survived abuse, and this is how it comes back to October being um, Awareness Month for domestic violence as well as for breast cancer, when we have survived abuse, when we have survived a negative experience, um, particularly something that happened in childhood, then it can create trauma in us. And that trauma can cause us to doubt ourselves, doubt other people. Um, it can cause us to be embarrassed or ashamed. And so we get in this pattern of these negative core beliefs. Right? You all have heard me talk about the negative core beliefs before. These um, these things that we perceive to be true, that we have created out of uh, construction of events that have happened, out of people, how people have ex um, treated us. And so what abuse and neglect does is it puts us in survival mode. Um, so now I've got to figure out how to make sense of when there's danger, when there's not danger, um, how to be able to disconnect from this hurt, to continue to be in a relationship with this person who is supposed to be safe but isn't safe. And this can be um, in childhood from uh, people who are parents or guardians, but this also can be in our, in our relationships with intimate partners. This can be in our relationships with friends and family uh, members who aren't our parents uh, where they've heard us, but I trusted you because of who you were in my life. And so now I have to disconnect how you've made me feel um, because I need to be able to perceive that you would tell me the truth, that you can't be wrong. I, I, you know, sometimes that loyalty piece, um, you because you're my caregiver or because we're in this relationship, uh, I, I, I have this sense of loyalty toward you. And so I need to believe you in order for me to be able to accept this treatment that I have. Right. And so that's, again, what influences this core belief. Um, you love me and you care about me. That's what you've told me uh, by virtue of this relationship that we have. Um, I believe that. And so if I believe that, then I'm going to believe the other things that you're saying, even if there are things about me that aren't true. 
Sometimes when we have particularly a, a history of different types of abuse, a different types of trauma, um, then it also begins to have the other effect, right? So we've talked about it's kind of unwavering support and trust in people that have harmed us. But sometimes it goes in the other direction of now I don't trust anyone. If I can't trust these people who are our family, then I definitely am not going to be able to trust other people. If I can't trust these people who said they were my friends, I'm definitely not going to be able to trust other people. And so now I don't believe what anyone tells me because I'm coming from a place of skepticism and mistrust because I've been hurt by other people. And so I believe that you may be using this statement again, and that's where that manipulation piece um, can kind of come from, like what else is going to happen uh, as, a, as a means to get me to do something. And so I can't trust that you're actually being sincere when you give me this compliment. But the other thing is sometimes we recognize that a compliment comes with a cost. So I've been in a relationship with people that have harmed me, um, then part of that cycle of abuse that we often hear about in relationships is that honeymoon period or this gift period. So you hurt me, person that I love and care about, parent, uh, spouse, um, person I'm dating, uh, friend, and then what you'll do is you'll do something for me. That might be to give me a compliment, it might be to give me a gift, um, and so as you're giving me this compliment, what I'm thinking about is what's going to happen on the other side of that. Is there going to be a string attached to this compliment where I have to do something now because you gave me this compli uh, compliment because now you're going to make me feel guilty um, and I'm going to feel obligated to do something because you gave me this compliment. You showed up um, for me in this way uh, in your mind and so I owe you now. Or on the other side of that is you've given me this compliment because now this is part of a cycle and so now I know that you... You're going to give, do these nice things for me. You're going to give me this compliment. And that's going to be followed at some point by you hurting me again. And so when we hear that compliment, that's where we go to the place of. So it gives us an anxiety uh, because we're thinking, OK, what's going to happen next? This is the quiet before the storm. And sometimes I think that because we're in these cycles of being mistreated um, and abused for so long, and again, these core beliefs are formed about that this information is valid, we begin to expect this much. And so when people give us a compliment, it is not consistent with the narrative that we've been told previously. So it doesn't match, and that's where that confusion can sometimes come from. Like, why would you say that? Sometimes we are just trying to be able to manage our distress, to be able to tolerate the things that we're experiencing. And so that inner critic actually becomes a part of us because it allows us to be able to get through difficult moments, right? This is why people will say, uh, I prepare for the worst. <laughs> so if something positive happens, it's like, oh, okay. But I don't ever actually really believe that something positive is going to happen because I'm going to be let down. And this is where this inner critic sometimes protects us through us not wanting to hear a compliment is because I don't want to be let down. I don't want to let you down. Um, and I also don't want to have anything negative happen as a result of me receiving this compliment. And so I rebuff it. Sometimes what can happen is when we have had negative academic experiences, and I know a lot of you probably had someone in your academic career at some point that didn't believe in you. It might have been a peer. It might have been a teacher. It might have been a professor. Um, it might have been a principal. Someone who limited you, put you in a box, um, told you what you could do and what you couldn't do, or gave you very harsh feedback that you internalized as being a reflection not of your work, but of who you are as a person. Or perhaps in your employment opportunities, maybe you had a very harsh supervisor, maybe you got an evaluation and the evaluation information was very negative and something that went against what you had believed about yourself. So that began to replace how you saw yourself. And so these kind of experiences also can shape us to where it can be difficult for us to receive a compliment in an area where we receive some negative feedback from previously, because we've done, instead of um, putting more weight in our own observations, and beliefs. Now we're putting weight in other people's observations or, or beliefs that have been negative. And so that overrides any other positive information we have received. No, clearly that negative information, that's the truth about who I really am. These other people, like they're just being nice um, or they're just saying that, uh, but they don't actually really mean it. There also may be something in your life that has changed. So as we think about our survivors of breast cancer, 
And so sometimes what happens is there are physical changes in our body. We look different. We feel different. Um, There may be some things that we aren't able to do anymore that we were able to do previously. We've talked a bit before about how sometimes we'll attach our worth and our value to what we can do. And sometimes also what we look like. And so if there were things about me, maybe it was my hair, maybe it was my skin, um, it was smooth and it was soft. uh, But now things are, are rough because I've gone through treatment. Uh, Maybe there are scars now in my skin where there weren't scars. Maybe there is something that was there previously that's not there that I truly valued, such as my breasts, and those are gone or they're different. And so I feel like I don't have the same self-esteem. I don't have the same attractiveness that I had before. I don't have the same abilities. The things people complimented me on before, they're different now. And so because those things have changed, now because I'm not getting compliments on those particular things that I'm used to receiving compliments on, then I don't think that anything else is valuable about me, is worthy about me. So why would you give me a compliment? Because clearly I'm not the same person that I was. Or maybe because I place place so much worth in something, an ability, maybe you had a, 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 a academic ability or an athletic ability that you no longer have, right? Because we change as we get older. So I may have dominated the court or the field um, when I was in my 20s, but now I'm in my 50s. And so I'm no longer doing that. And so I don't have a sense of worth outside of that. So people aren't giving me compliments anymore because I'm no longer in that. I've retired. Uh, And so now I feel like if a person gives me a compliment, then I'm questioning like, Why would you compliment me on this thing? Because it's not what I'm used to receiving compliments on, but also because I don't actually think that I have uh, what you're saying I have in this other area, because what mattered to me is when I had that dominating ability on the field, on the court, when I had that dominating ability in my work, when I had that dominating ability academically, and I no longer have that. So this thing that you're giving me a compliment on doesn't carry the same worth and value for me. Other times there are just some cultural, religious, I'll kind of put that in the same category, spiritual views that we grew up with, that may also make it difficult for us to receive compliments. So maybe you grew up in a home where there weren't compliments um, because compliments were deemed as vanity, or maybe you were around people that tore you down and they didn't lift you up. Um, You may have grown up in an environment where you never saw anyone being validated for anything. Um, And so you're uncomfortable when people give compliments because it's just outside of what you've ever experienced. It feels foreign to you. You may be a modest person and just don't like a lot of attention drawn to you. You may be shy. You may be um, somebody that's more introverted. You you say to yourself, hey, I like to kind of play the background. I don't want to be up front. And so when people give you compliments, you feel anxiety because now they're drawing attention to you when you're not used to receiving that type of attention. Um, Sometimes we um, grow up in environments where we're told that getting compliments isn't appropriate, right? So maybe um, if you're a child, you grew up in an environment where they didn't feel like it was appropriate to give children compliments, but they felt like it was appropriate to give older adults compliments, vice versa. Um, so maybe you grew up in an environment where you only were taught to praise children and you weren't a taught to praise adults because they're like, you're an adult, you should be doing that. Right. And so some of these things can kind of factor in there. Or maybe you grew up in a spiritual religious environment where you were taught uh, that to give compliments to others is what is of value, to see things in others, to um, give joy to others, to um, support others. That's the priority. And anything else is vainglorious. And so there may be that kind of value system that is in place with regard to why it may be difficult for you to receive compliments. Okay, Tarver, what does all of this mean? How do I improve? Where do I need to go? Um, I, I think a lot of different directions, right? Because it also depends on what your challenge is. And you may find that none of those quite captured what you're experiencing. And so my first step for you is going to be to assess, do a self-assessment. What are some of the ways I feel in my body when people give me a compliment? Where do my thoughts immediately go? How do I experience that compliment? 
And I think that sometimes when we do that self-reflection work, that'll give us a lot of information because then it allows us to be able to really examine, is it the cultural, familiar, or spiritual beliefs that were given to me early in life? Are they still applicable? Do I want to change them? Do I want to adjust them? Um, Do I want to allow them to give um, me a little bit more leeway in some of these things that were maybe very strict when I grew up? Maybe I've met some other people and I want to adopt some of the ways that they um, kind of engage with compliments because that feels maybe more consistent with who I want to be, um, right? But also, I think sometimes it's very important for us to understand this negative inner voice, this, this, this critic, if you will. Truthfully, the critic is really trying to protect us. Now, granted, the protection is not necessarily the most healthy form of protection, but it is a form of protection. That inner critic is attacking us because they don't want us to be disappointed. They don't want us to fail. They don't want us to be hurt. So essentially, they're saying, wait, let me kind of give you more of a negative perception of yourself so you don't put yourself out there. But also, they're trying to protect us from being attacked because there have been people that weren't trustworthy, because there have been people who exploited us, because there have been people that manipulated us and abused us. And so this inner critic if you will, kind of takes the sting away because, hey, you can't hurt me any more than I hurt me. I become the attacker and the attacked. But now that we recognize who that inner critic is, that it really is coming from a place of protection, now I can begin to look into ways that I may be able to keep myself safe without having to attack myself. Ways that I can be able to allow that there can be trustworthy relationships and I can trust other people and that I can trust me without having to set up this negative inner critic in a way to do that. Right. So first off is let me kind of assess the accuracy of the information that's being given to me. When a person gives me a compliment, I would tell people pause before you respond, because some of us automatically go into that place of being dismissive or deflecting or denying or even getting aggressive with people for giving this compliment. Pause. Sit with that compliment for a few seconds before you give an automatic response. Practice saying, thank you, whether you absolutely agree with it or not. And then you go back and kind of allow yourself to process that that compliment. Okay, what does this remind me of? What does it bring up for me? Where is the discomfort in my body when I hear this compliment? Or where are my thoughts going to? Because then you can target the intervention because if it is causing me discomfort in my body, my stomach gets upset, my anxiety goes up, right? Then, you know, part of my intervention needs to be around, okay, let me calm myself down and figure out why my um, autonomic nervous system is going bananas right now, right? Um, And then the other piece is, is there truth to what they're saying? Because oftentimes we're so quick to be dismissive, we don't actually hear what a person is saying. So let me actually think about, is there some truth to what this person said, even if I don't necessarily perceive that as a way I would describe myself, is there truth to what they are saying? And as I'm evaluating that, then I also need to be clear about what things are actually true for me, because multiple things can be true. So I may perceive that these are my strengths. These are the things that I would say, you know what, if I received a compliment about that, I can actually own that and say, I appreciate that because I know I worked hard or I know I've fine tuned this skill set. But I want you to hear that sometimes other things may be strengths for you or things that people want to compliment you on, even if you don't see them. And that requires us to shift our perspective. Let me be able to think about how this person may see me. And some of that may require us to give ourselves some self-compassion and grace because sometimes people will say, good job, and we don't feel like we did that great of a job. Maybe it was an off day for us. However, I showed up. And even if I didn't reach whatever level that I hold myself to in terms of my work ethic, it doesn't mean I didn't do a good job. It may be that I have some perfectionistic tendencies and it wasn't to my level. I mean, I want us to be inspired to give our best. I also want us to receive that even when I am not capable of giving what I think is my best, that doesn't mean that I didn't do the best I could do in that moment. And I think it's very true that for a lot of us, we do need to do some work around building our confidence 
and our competence, trusting and believing in our ability to do things, um, recognizing that we do have strengths. I will often ask people to give me a list of strengths and areas for weakness, right? And of course, this is a common thing, especially if you've ever had a job interview. People can so very easily rattle, rattle off the things they don't think they're good at. But sometimes people really struggle to identify what they are good at, what are strengths for them, what are their areas where they feel like they truly blossom, those great parts of themselves. So I encourage people to work on that. And how are we going to do that? Come on, plug for therapy. Sometimes we need to be in a safe space, a non-judgmental space to be able to work through that. Because if I've had negative experiences with partners at work, academics, coaches, then I may not trust people. And so I may first need to get with someone who is trustworthy. As we begin to work on the trust and therapeutic relationship, then I may be able to better discern who I can trust outside of the therapeutic relationship. And so I can begin to now work on being able to accept that people can say things and there not be a condition to them. That they're simply giving me a compliment because it's true, not because they want anything for me. I also think it's really important for us to be able to recognize that we know ourselves. And in knowing ourselves, we are able to make these changes because, again, what we believe affects how we behave. So believing like I actually can work on this because sometimes what happens is like I'll never be able to accept the compliment. It's just not going to happen. And I move on. So I never allow myself to actually be able to work on this skill. And why is this skill important? It's important because accepting compliments can have a very positive impact, not only on our overall well-being, but it helps with our, our feeling competent, our feeling like we have worth. It helps with trauma processing. It can improve our relationships. And so it has a lot of protective factors for us as well. And so I do want you all to hear, <laughs> above all else, that someone else can see you in a truth that may be difficult for you to see. That doesn't mean that it's not accurate or that it's not factual. It just means that you haven't learned to see it and accept it just yet. But I will tell you that you deserve to be able to receive a compliment and recognize that it is truth. And in that truth, you can be set free from not being able to accept compliments. Okay, be well. <laughs>